Hey, this is Chris with BeertownAustin.com. Welcome to another episode of Over a Pint. Today I'm here at the Draft House with Josh and Constance. Cheers, guys. Mm. So, uh, Josh, what is this? Uh, this is publication brewed by Russian River uh, in collaboration with the Tornado. Falling Rock and Horse Brass, I believe. One of our regulars was kind enough to bring us some from somewhere that he got it. I'm not sure where he scored it at, but he left some here for us, and I'm pleased to try it. Yeah, it's tasty. It's very good. I guess it's a tribute to War Ball. That's the way it's been described to me. So, I guess... Uh, Draft House has been around for 41 years now, and um, it's got a history. Do you want to tell me about that history? Uh, I don't know exactly what the history is. I've been told a number of things over the years. Uh, I do know that it was started by Wayne and Gay Overton in 1968. Um, what he did prior to building this place, which he did build it specifically to be a tavern. Mm -hmm. um, apparently there was a house, like a family-owned house, um, single-family home here prior to that, and he took that down and built this tavern here, specifically to be a multi-tap beer bar. It was probably a pretty rare thing back then. Yeah. I think he had 18 taps back then. Uh, it was probably mostly Coors, Schlitz, Holy, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But I think he had Guinness and Newcastle and Bass. Um, it was modeled after the Tavern, which is down on Lamar. And, um, oh, with the air conditioning. Yeah. I, I've been told that he made it to that place prior to, to building this place, which I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, I've also been told that he managed the Continental Club sometime before 1968. I don't know if that's true. Um, I've been told that he was a dancer from Milwaukee that moved here with his wife. I don't know if that's true. I like that story. That's a good one. <laughs> um, recently I had a guy tell me that no, the Overtons were an old family name from, from uh, Austin and that they were well known and they had some shady dealings, that his brother was a bit of a criminal and the cops knew him pretty well. I don't know if any of this stuff is true. That's um, a good one. When we took it over in 95, um, Wayne had, had died and his wife had been running it for a number of years. And then she fell in poor health. And um, the dentist, Glenda Smith, purchased the building. And we opened the business in 95 um, and added a brewing system shortly thereafter. I know part of the history is it was the draft tours. When did the when did the name change? What was going on with that? And I was uh myself and some other people uh, got the business in '95, and she was uh, Gay Overton was still alive, and she did not want anybody using the name because she had ran it for those years. And so she felt like it would not. She wanted it to be a different business. Uh, okay. So we changed one letter. We went to draft tours. Um, my partnership fell apart in 99, just due to personality differences and just a bunch of issues. And uh, we sold to the dentist, who owns the building, has her practice upstairs, now she also owns the draft house. Um, and in that time, uh, Gay had died, and my ex-partnership wanted to keep Draft Horse, so we went back to Draft House. So only four years over the 41 years was it called Draft Horse. Um, but for some reason, that really sticks in people's head more than Draft House. Like, yeah. people still call it Draft Horse all the time. Or other worse combinations like Alamo Draught Horse is my favorite <laughs> one. So, I guess, where are some of the, you know, you guys do some special things here. You know, you have the, the house brews, and you do a, you know, thing just recently started called Firkin Friday. Want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, Firkin Friday, um, it's hard to get special beers in the state of Texas. Things that have small um, volumes are not worth it for the brewers to bring in because of the cost for, for labeling. So uh, with Firkins, I have my own keg float that I ship to breweries around the country. And so we can get beers that already have label approval. A lot of times they'll put a spin on it. They'll add different ingredients, hops being the most common. But, you know, you can get coffee beans or chocolate cocoa 
corn dips or vanilla had, uh, beans or all kinds of stuff. I a whiskey cast uh, uh, Dell's Pale Ale here for that too. Yeah, and so we can get beers that have label approval in the different formats that just keeps the excitement going. And then okay. cask itself is it's a different beast altogether. It's um, often it's, it's finer bubbled and softer, and it allow it's more organic in flavor when it's done properly. So, um, I guess tell me a little bit about the house brews because that's something that uh, you know when I first started coming to Draft House, uh, you know I think that's kind of really what hooked me. You know, is that you know you, you know you guys have a lot of good beer and a great selection. You know, I like the atmosphere, but then also you have like this. A kind of consistent, kind of random, rotating uh, lineup of house moves, which I think is, you know, really kind of puts you guys on the map. Hey, the, the word for me is experimentation. I have so many other beers on that I'm pretty well allowed to do whatever I want. Um, with that said, over the years, I've learned a lot from the experimentation, so I've, I'm, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm sort of narrowing the things that I'm doing, although yeah. I'm moving into, I got some whiskey barrels, I'm going to be doing some barrel aging. And, oh, cool. I've been doing some souring lately, oh, yeah. um, and I've certainly made my share of poor beers because sort of the nature of experimentation yeah. is sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. But it's been it's been great fun for for uh, uh, the learning process for me. You know, it's like uh, I've definitely learned a lot. You guys have a, a party coming up, yeah, forty first birthday party. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, it's just a chance for us to to um, celebrate our longevity and try and showcase a bunch of uh, rare and cask beers. Um, we we'll spent some time trying to line up some stuff that's going to excite everybody. Uh, we'll have about eight or ten uh, casks and eight or ten uh, kegs that we'll be selling in samplers, um, so everybody can try them all uh, if you cool. like. Um, I can give you the list if you like, or you can just go on our website and check it out. Oh wait, it's not listed on our website yet. I'll post it online sometime soon. <laughs> it might be on the website when you see this video. <laughs> um, I guess you uh, sent an email out with some of them. What, uh, I guess, what are you most excited about being able to pull in for this? Um, I guess the new Belgium tart lychee, oh, which yeah. I haven't, I know very little about it. It's a new um, sour beer from New Belgium that's got um, lychee and then cinnamon in it. And I just have heard great things about it. Looking forward to trying it. Yeah, me too. I was excited to see that on the list. Uh, we're very hop heavy. We have a bunch of IPAs. Yeah. Um, cask and otherwise. Um, Dogfish 120, Stone Kelly Boutique, Self-Righteous, Lagunitas, Hop Stupid. I was sad to see the, uh, the Hop Rod Rye on the cask. I don't think I've ever had that in the cask. That's one of my favorites, I think. Um, also, yeah, the Kelly Belgique, that's really cool you guys are going to get that. I've been looking for that one for a while. It's real neat. I think they sent like four or five. I know the Saucer's going to be pouring at their event. They are doing their fall. We were actually originally going to do it that same day, but then they announced it first. So, Saucer, if you're watching this, you should, you should do a, a spring festival, not a fall festival. <laughs> so we're in competition. I mean, whatever. So, um... Yeah, I guess it's going to be November 7th, right? 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Till 10. Till 10. I'll just keep repeating what you say. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. I like it. Nice echo. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a DJ, right? My bro yeah, my brother DJs. Um, it's going to be Classic Soul. Um, we have Traveling Bistro doing the food. He's going to have um, bourbon and coke pork chop on a stick. Oh, cool. Jamaican jerk chicken on a stick. Veggie kebabs with mint and cucumber. Uh, we have Brewmaster Quiz administered by um, Awesome Humber Supply. Oh, cool. With prizes, just beer swag, um, tents. Tents, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, November 7th, it's going to be, uh, I forgot the time, it's going to be 1 o'clock. 1 yeah. to 10. 1 to 10, November 7th, here in the parking lot, right? Right here at the draft house. Yeah, so come out. It's going to be some really good beer. It should be a lot of fun. And um, if you can't make it then, come out some other time. It's a great place. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the times with the Over the Pint. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yep.